Okay guys, so in this video I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks that hopefully is going to help you reduce your standard unit test boilerplate in React. So let's get into it. So uh, basically the other day I was talking to one of my coworkers uh, about unit testing and he was saying that it's a little bit of a hassle to write all this boilerplate because we have a few standard tests that are like they're always there we always write them uh, and he just mentioned it and i showed him an, an approach that i've used uh, a few times that works pretty well so i thought I'll, I'll make a video and i'll show you as well so let's start out by looking at my little components i have this trivial little component that is just going to print out hello world and it also adds a few event listeners just because reasons but we're we're gonna look at that in just a moment and here is my lovely little test and these two tests that I have here they are pretty much always tests that I write so I'm a big fan of snapshot testing and acts you may or may not have heard about where it's just a it's a, a library that helps you check for accessibility uh, violations in your HTML uh, it's not perfect so it's like you still have to do like the manual thing with screen readers and like all that stuff if accessibility is a factor to your company which in my case it is but it's something that actually does help quite a bit so i usually write these two quite a lot the what i usually do is that uh, i try to think about the different render state of my component now in this specific case i don't conditionally render anything so i only have one test per like I just have these two tests, but if let's say for the sake of argument that I added some conditions where if you input different parameters, it's gonna render different types of HTML, then I would create one snapshot per rendered state and the same thing with the accessibility test. The reason being because as you can imagine, if you have different rendered state, if you output different HTML depending on input, well, you might break like your accessibility or you might do something that you didn't expect with your html uh, and this is the thing that i love about snapshots because like you should still do functional tests it's very important to make sure that you know click events and like all that works because that's that's where your you sh your focus should be but you should always have at least one in my opinion snapshot per render state as well because it's so much cheaper and faster to validate that you rendered the correct html with a snapshot than it is to try to assert with your own test and the same thing I had a coworker saying that he doesn't like snapshots because uh, like they break all the time and I go yeah sure they break all the time whenever you change the the rendered HTML in some way but I mean updating them is fairly straightforward uh, and he said well but I prefer the visual regression test because I only care about if the visual part changes and that's the thing we do with like Percy or some other like Loki or whatever visual regression testing system you use and I told them that you have to remember that HTML is about more than the visual aspect remember that if you have the wrong attributes or the wrong properties or things like that on a component you might actually break functionality that isn't visual so that's why I really do like snapshots you don't need more than one snapshot per render state, but you should make them, in my opinion, and I do. So what I do is something like this. I create a enhanced render function, and then I do this. Like I could have just, like I'm, this second test here is just really to, to illustrate the point, right? Uh, but uh, as you can see here, I have this enhanced render method or function, and you'll notice that it's asynchronous and then it doesn't do a snapshot it just just checks that there's a first shot this is like an this is a very arbitrary test so you've just it's a little bit contrived i'm gonna be completely honest here but uh, let's take a look under the hood and see what's actually going on so what i've done is that i've moved the just acts and like the extending the expect method uh, function and all of this good stuff and the rendering from the render method from the react testing library uh, and then i've created this enhanced render method that uh, basically all it does is that it takes in a bunch of flags so that I can opt out of specific assertions if I want to because it's uh, this is something that it's always good to give people an out if they need it and 
if you're doing a migration, which was the case for me, you don't want, I mean, because I'm adding this function in retrospect and there's so many different tests. So when you add the ax assertion, as an example, you have like a hundred components that have violations and you don't want to fix them before you can add this thing in. So in my case, I actually did the reverse. I disabled the test by default. And when I'm done with the story, I'm going to be able to just remove it. And then you're going to have to opt out of it per default because I'm going to fix all of the issue, the accessibility issues. And uh, the, then like we're going to be golden. But the way that I do this is basically this. I add this little extra thing. You don't have to do this. It's just me doing my thing, what I think makes sense. So I have this uh, set up that I use for event listeners. So I create this little get event listeners um, set up where basically I'm uh, creating a spy for the add event listener and the remove event listener methods. And then I just set the map where I add in all the uh, all of the event listeners that are being added. And then if we call a remove, I remove them. And that allows me to then do the a validation check where I basically just check, okay, uh, did we actually remove all the event listeners? Because that's super, I've seen this a hundred times before. Like there's like a bunch of event listeners just laying about after the component is un, like unmounted or maybe a component re-renders many, many times and it mutates and like adds a bunch of stuff and doesn't do, do its cleanup correctly. And then we call restore basically just so that we can continue using the add and remove event listener if some other test needs to use it. So that's basically what's going on here. So we just render out the component and then we immediately unmount it and we do the validation. You can, I mean, you don't have to, all of this is optional, of course. This is just me showing you some, some stuff that I like to do. Uh, and then we render again, and then we do an assertion. We move our, we check our snapshot and then we return a promise where, well, we do the accessibility check and that's pretty much the whole story. So the reason why I did, I've done all of these like extra uh, interfaces and stuff is just because I, I like, this is one of my favorite things about React if you, because you can create the conditional signatures and conditional return types. Uh, and that's basically what's going on here. You can do it your own way. I mean, you could just create functions that actually do this for you and like do it some other fashion. But I thought this was, I, I like the clean, it's kind of clean uh, as a consumer of this. So what I've done is that I've created overrides where if you don't pass any options in, we're gonna get back a promise. If we pass in a disable A11Y test and we set that to true, we're going to just return the render result. The reason we were doing that is because the, if if we if we disable the accessibility test, we're not going to return a promise anymore. We're going to just do a synchronous operation. And if we pass in the options and but we're not setting the accessibility disabled to true, then we also return a promise because we're actually going to do uh, like we're going to do the accessibility check. And this lets me do, this is why you're, you saw this earlier where when I don't pass anything, I'm actually getting back a promise. So if I remove that, that's actually going to be a compilation error or it's going to be a type error because we are getting back a promise. But if I change this from true to false, that's also going to fail now because now we're also getting back a promise. But since I'm disabling the accessibility test, we're actually just, well, we're getting back the result immediately. And this is one of my, this is, I think is a very nice thing with TypeScript where you can kind of tweak the re return types and things like that off, uh, off a method, off a function or a method. Uh, if uh, if you use conditional uh, properties like that, uh, so the this is uh, you you know try it out see if it works for you. Uh, I, what I really like about this is because as I said, I have this I, I do create snapshots and accessibility te accessibility tests for every rendered state of my component, and that adds up to quite a lot of tests like a lot of boilerplate if you think about it. So if you could if you can reduce that by just a little bit by doing something like this and even add a few other tests if you wanted to that should always be included when you render a component. It's a pretty decent I mean overall it's a pretty nice thing. Try it out see if you like it. Uh, it's been working pretty well for me and my coworkers. So hopefully you you find the same thing. Have a great day.